talk about visual light, the projection, to have a branch come up to UH makes me wonder, are people no longer going to have legs? I'm also so old, I remember when students walked up and down the hill as far as the med school, down to Varsity Theater. Wayne let his classes out a few minutes early. The students streamed up and down, rain or shine. The seats were full. In fact, the fire marshal used to show up at the beginning of class. There were 840 seats. They gave out 900 class cards. And they had to wait till a few kids rearranged their schedules and dropped the classes. But nobody griped. The handicapped students could take a shuttle or a bus up to campus. And I just really question, I have seen the overlay photographs of what that's going to do to our beautiful valley. And I think, we're grousing that people don't get enough exercise. That's my question. Okay. Well, <laughs> Does, is, question. This, is this cast in stone? It's, of course, it's about 40 years down the road. Yeah. So Sarah's question is a good one, and I, I like talking about it because what you'll see, and there's no, we're not building we, I'm not about to say I keep saying we, but it's stopping at Almana Shopping Center. And then to pay for the next segments, we have to come back to the community and say, how do you want to pay for this? And the federal government has to say they'll pay for a part of it. And then we talk about building that next segment. But you have seen, I'm sure people in Manoa Valley have seen, particularly at neighborhood board meetings, they'll show this flyover over the freeway. So it's already going to, the freeway is pretty high in the air, right? You've got the overpass we all drive under on the university. And it was going to go another 30 feet above that, so it's like 80 feet in the air. And everyone goes, oh my god, that's ugly. We can't do that. Well, here's what I would be saying. I wouldn't take it over the freeway, because I agree with Sarah. Why are we having to take it right to the doorstep of these young students who are the most part are healthy and young and, and can do some walking? And what I would do is I'd follow what Harvard did. Harvard University, you have Harvard Yard, right? If anyone's gone to Boston and Cambridge, there's a red brick wall around Harvard Yard. Where is their university administration building where the president of Harvard, the all-powerful, all-knowing president of Harvard, a guy like Larry Summers, who used to be the guy, where's his office? Is it in Harvard Yard? No. It's at Holyoke Center outside of Harvard Yard, right by Harvard Square, right next to the T, which is Boston's metro. Boston built the first subway system in our country, 1889, first one. When I went there, it didn't go to the airport. When I went there, that was in the 70s, it goes to the airport now, so they're still building it. Of course, when they built it, there weren't airplanes. So the point I'm making is the university building, in my mind, should be relocated down at Macaulay Moody. It should be somewhere kind of by the intersection of university and King. And that it should be a beautiful building that's built to house that not only the president's office, top administrators, but also a student union, um, a bookstore, and those kind of things. And guess what that will do? It'll pull the university down into the town. It'll bring business to the merchants that need business. And it's gonna make it a true university town because every college should have a college town. We don't have one, but we got a beautiful little town down there. Most of the land is owned by Bishop Estate. And if Bishop Estate cooperated in all of this, we could actually have a, a, a beautiful little town center designed with the UH pulling the students down. The train would actually not be that high. It would come into the Holyoke, there our version of a Holyoke Center and stop right there. And people would walk up the campus underneath the freeway going towards where it stands sheriff is. You know, there's that sideway you can go in. The other thing, they could take the overpass and paint trump you know what that is, that fake, make it look like stone. So instead of an elevated freeway you see there, you could actually paint it to make it look like a quaint bridge. You could landscape those, the entrances, you know, they have all that grass with monkey pod trees to kind of hide some of the cement. So there are things we can do with a little imagination, a little creativity, and a lot of cooperation with the community. So that's what I like to see, and you're right, it's not gonna happen next year, it's gonna happen 10, 20 years from now. But we can't forget, in my mind, to do those kinds of things. So I'm glad you asked that question. Other comments? Before we go back to Ellen, and Ellen, you're asking good questions, I just want to make sure. Yes, Nelson. Is that okay, Ellen? No, but we'll come. Okay, we will after we'll come back to you, okay. I'm Nelson Smith. I'm gonna vote for your curve. 
Thank you, Nelson. But a practical question? How are people going to know what you differ from from Peter Carlyle? There's more going on than the, the rail. And I know we're spending a lot of time talking about rail, but how are you going to differentiate yourself from the other candidate? So Nelson asks the question, how do I separate myself? Because you got two pro-rail guys and one anti-rail guy, and it seems like everyone wants to just talk about rail. But when I announced my election running for mayor uh, about two months ago, I chose the transit center um, down by uh, the airport because I wanted to say this is so much more than about rail. And I told you why I'm running. It is about sewers. It is about the parks. It is about the potholes and the roads. It's about alternative energy. It's about energy efficient lights on our streets and I was starting to work on that. It's about putting solar full of the ticks on all of our city buildings. It's about working with the other counties to get the wind energy and geothermal energy from where it's not as much in demand because there's less population to the marketplace here so that we can become truly independent of fossil fuels. And by the way, I actually went and met with Robbie on when I was the acting mayor saying, Robbie, how can we get alternative energy just running our rail system? Because rail's gonna be grown on electricity. And we all know it's, it's gonna be easier to get ourselves off of fossil fuel generating electrical energy first. Because there's, it's cheaper to do. And it's, you know, everyone else needs to buy cars that are no longer needing a fossil fuel. We're going in that direction. I think it'll take longer. But it's about energy. Do you hear any mayor talking about energy? I don't. They say it's a state issue. I think it is a city issue. 930,000 people live here. And I started to work on those kinds of issues. I do believe it is about off-grid bike paths. I'm passionate about it. It's another thing I just believe if you build it, they will ride. Why in Asia, why in Europe, with very hot weather and very cold weather, you see so many people riding bikes? And we live in a linear pattern between the mountain and the sea. Most of it is flat if you're going Eva Diamond Head, and it's coming downhill if you're coming from the valleys. Why aren't we building a off-street grade bike path so people can commute to work with smaller ones coming down from each of the valleys so people can use it to live more healthy, but also use it just for transportation? I rode my bike a few times to work from Manoa, and I would get to work so pissed off because people would almost kill me, right? You're in, they paint a line on the road and say, this is the bike path. That's not a bike path, as we know. So there is those kinds of issues, you know, I, and I try to talk about it as much as I can. I believe in, I really believe, watching Peter Carlisle, that he's not interested in these kinds of issues. He was a prosecutor for 14 years. He likes the law and order stuff. He still talks like a law and order man. If you listen to him, he, in his state of the city, is nothing but the truth, all the truth, whatever that thing is, you don't even know. But he would talk like he's still a prosecutor. For me, it's about systems and how to make them work better and how to get things done more quickly. And it's little things, Hanama Bay. When I was the acting mayor, we had problems at Hanama Bay in maintenance. And we deserve to be punished for it. Instead of blaming someone else or saying, well, that happened when Mufi was mayor and I'm mayor, I went out there and said, we're not doing a good job. We need to figure out how to do a better job. And a lot of it was just maintenance systems, checklists. So when people run around, like the computers, touchscreen computers weren't working, there was rust, the, the Lao Hala roof was rotting through. We just needed checklists to make sure when things are breaking that they were being fixed within a short period of time. I like these things. So I think that makes me different than Peter. I need to talk about it more. But it's how do you get off the issue of rail that everyone wants to talk about so I can talk about it. Um, and I'm gonna keep talking about these other things. When you see my vision, you'll see all of those things in there. I talk about the Wamanau well, landfill, and the h pocket third boiler, recycling more, reducing the need for an everyday landfill so we're like European countries. Germany has no landfills anymore. In fact, they're mining their landfills from the pre-World War II digging this stuff out and burning it and getting the, the metals out that are very valuable. So we need to think like that and be more progressive. So instead of saying we're putting the next landfill, it should be when we don't need a landfill. And we're doing better. 90% of all the energy, of all, I mean, all the Opala we generate on this island is either burned or recycled. 90%. We should all be proud of that. We're doing a good job. Your green bins and your blue bins are working. You're being careful when you buy things or working. We can do a better job, but I think we're one of the best cities in the country in terms of, of, of burning our Opala or recycling it. We're pretty progressive, and Frank Fossey had a lot to do with it. He built the H-Power facility. 
that the third boiler is going to be coming online shortly to even help us more. Does it kind of answer the question? I could go on on the different things, but I need to make sure my message is clear that it is so much about more than rail, that I'm interested in these other issues, and I think I'm a hands-on kind of leader that rolls up my sleeves and gets involved and is engaged. Where Peter travels a lot, he doesn't seem to want to talk about the details too much, and he likes to blame other people for the problems. On rail, he's blaming hard, saying they're not doing a good job. I have to say, if I was married, I'd blame myself for not doing a very good job because we have real problems with rail, and I think it's because the failure of leadership there and a failure to own up and step up and say we need to do more about it to address all of your concerns, which I'm trying to do tonight. Other questions we got? I thought we'd maybe go to 7:30, said to 8. I know you guys are busy. I know you've got other questions. Please come up and ask on anything. You have no. Ask something, I'll repeat it. Or suggestions. You have, I know you got something to say. Huh? You're just talking. Any any other things? If, yes. Sorry. And then we'll go to Ellen after this. I just have a comment. After the great Manoa flood, and a lot of us know what the causes were, the Manoa flood was there. It was the first government person to show up, and he came back with him. He was really a hands-on, concerned guy, and I think you were in the legislature yeah. at that time. So Sarah's saying, you know, the Manoa flood of 2004, and it does say I'm the kind of leader I am. Again, I mean, I got a call, I was down in Waikiki at some function, and they said Manoa Valley's flooding, and I came up immediately, and wow, it was really flooding. I mean, I thought it was an exaggeration when they were telling me cars were washing out of the lawns parking lot into the stream. Got up, I was like, oh, I didn't sleep all that night. Brian Taniguchi was with us. Isaac wasn't yet elected. The flood was his fault. No, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it was... And I, and I stayed up all night and all the next day into the next night, going to neighbors and helping and trying to figure it out. And then we worked really hard to try to address some of the problems. Unfortunately, there's so much more that needs to be done and it could happen again. The only good thing I feel about that I have contributed is if you look up on Tantlis, there's a big cement thing on the side of the road. You may see it. It still stands out. It's going to grow in. But it's actually a diffus diffusion system, kind of like a French drain, because all the water was pouring down from the, from the road this one narrow area, and then pouring down the valley, and it looked like Pompeii on this side, so it's away from the stream on the side of the valley. It's all cinder from the last volcanic eruption. It dumped down with the water into five or six homes, broke the windows. I mean, there are cinders inside their houses six feet deep. And so that got built through working with the state and the city. Brian Taniguchi and Isaac and I worked hard, and Ann Kobayashi, to get funding, and that, that was built. Hopefully it'll work. But we need to do more around the stream. We need to really rethink how the stream works and soften the banks, not harden them so water moves slower, that we have places where it can pour off, that we can landscape it in ways with vegetation that will help hold water when necessary, but also let it flow, but not as fast. So I'm worried to death. Every time it rains, I think, is there going to be another flood? Now I think it, Isaac can step up, and I know he will. Yeah. You have a question here. Uh, can you comment on the fact that if you build a column now, I was in the paper just the other day, it's cheaper to build a column and tear it down later than necessary? So the question was, there was some, I understand that there was a heart um, meeting in which Don Horner, who is the, uh, the financial, financial person at heart, former head of First Line Bank, he's a smart guy, an accountant by training, who said, um, that he thought you could build the columns now and that if for some reason the project was killed, either because Ben gets elected or because he kills it or he gets elected and the Federal Transit Administration doesn't give the federal money, that um, it would be cheaper to tear them down. I don't know about that. I wasn't there. I don't know how, I wouldn't, I don't, I can't answer that. But here's what I do have an answer to. I believe that the money will come. I believe that Dan Inouye is good for it. I worked for him for four years. He's been a senator, a representative of the senator since statehood. He's delivered for Hawaii for 50 years. I think he's going to deliver on his promise to get the money. I believe he will remain the chair of the Appropriations Committee because I think the Senate will remain Democrat and I do believe that Obama will be elected president and he supports the rail project. Having said all of that, hey, you know, if I know for certain, you know, they all come to me and ask what stock should we buy tomorrow. But I believe 
that the facts show enough support for me to feel confident that you can build the columns and that the suspension on the top will go and the train will ride on it. But Ben Cayetano will scare you and say, what if, what if, what if? And I think about when we bought our first house, not the one in Manoa. People said, you're crazy. You're not a partner in your firm, you're an associate. What if you don't make a partner? Your wife works for Governor Ayo, she is the bank commissioner. What if he's not re-elected and she's out of a job? You won't be able to pay the mortgage. And if I listen to all the doomsday guys who tried to scare us into buying a house, we wouldn't have bought a house. But many in this room have bought a house. And yes, if one of us gets sick, we're in trouble because we're both paying the mortgage. Everyone in Hawaii works. But you believe in your future, you work hard, and if you do things right, you succeed. So I like to believe in the future, that I believe that we've done what we need to do and we have the right people in place from a president who's committed to building this project, who's put $250 million into his budget, to a senior senator who's, as I say, Dan Deliris, has been delivering for 50 years. And the last time I saw him, I had lunch with him about a month ago. He looks better today than he did 10 years ago. He's just doing very well. And I'm not God. I can't predict when he's going to pass away. And I hope he doesn't. So I believe he will deliver and we'll have the money to build the system. But the question you asked, I don't have an answer for. It doesn't, it's counterintuitive to me that it'd be cheaper to build it and tear it down. I don't think anything should ever be built and torn down. You build it to build it. And that's what I would be doing if I were mayor and making sure it happened. And I believe it would happen. Okay, yes.